Hello again. Let's review another hand. Now, instead of choosing a hand at random this time, I have one in particular that I've been wanting to dissect ever since I first played it. Uh, I actually felt pretty lost in this hand. Uh, let's go through the action. Uh, I have a suited connector uh, where I the low jack had raised and I had three bet from the small blind and got called. Uh, I'm not going to be three betting here all the time. Uh, just, you know, I'm going to want to do it every once in a while to keep uh, these mid-suited connectors uh, in my range uh, on a lot of these flops. Uh, the flop came all high cards uh, where I had the flush draw. And I had continuation bet with two-thirds pot on the flop. And I barreled turn and the river with these half pot bet sizes. Uh, I I really don't like these half pot bet sizes. I, I shouldn't have been doing it. I should have been going smaller or larger, but... You know, I, I felt so lost in this hand like, because I didn't know whether I should have been uh, being hyper-aggressive with large bets or uh, if this should have been more of a give-up hand. Uh, and I so I did these, like, in-between bet sizing, uh, which, you know, is just uh, wrong from both sides. So I'm really curious to see what the, what the solver has to say about this. Uh, and uh, but you know, being lost is an opportunity. Uh, this means I found a spot that's going to be valuable for me to study. And after this session, I'm going to know what to do here. And so are you. So let's uh, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to do two ranges. Uh, my range was the responding to a low jack raise first in, where we had three bet from the small blind. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna do that with a seven six suited, you know, about a, maybe a quarter of the time. Uh, for the imposition player, he was responding to, you know, my small blind three bet and had elected to call. And I have him doing that with ace queen about half the time. Our board here was ace of clubs, queen of diamonds, Jack of Diamonds. Uh, let's take this back to the flop. Our starting pot was 525. Effective stacks was my stack at 3637. Uh, the rake here is 5%, and there's a cap of $2. Now, we're going to use my favorite two-thirds bet size for, by the default. Uh, with only two bets left, get the money in smoothly, we're going to enable that, uh, which is not what we did here. Uh, and we should have, if we were going to be bluffing at this, I think we should have been doing it with the large bet sizes. Uh, don't donk, we're not going to enable this, uh, because we are going to be uh, donking, essentially, because uh, we were the pre-flop aggressor. Uh, and we're going to add an all-in, if uh, pushes us to 120. I don't care so much about my half pot bet sizing. I'm going to only care about uh, a third of the pot, two thirds of the pot, and 120% of the pot as my bet, bet sizes to choose from. We do the same for opponent. And we'll just use the default two-thirds pot for any raises. All right, let's build a tree. Uh, the tree is built. Let's run the solver. All right, let's take a look. Okay, now it looks like uh, this hits our small blind three-betting range pretty hard on this flop. Uh, we 
we've got uh, you know top pair a whole lot of the time, uh, middle pair. We've got a lot of straights, two pair. Uh, we've got a ton of these gut shots uh, to the to the nut straight. Uh, not very many no made hands, uh, and uh, so that's pretty interesting. And it looks like to take advantage of such a strong flop for us, uh, the solver is betting 100% of uh, these hands. Uh, they're all and they're all doing it with the with the small bet sizing. Uh, none of them are doing the two thirds bet size. So that was. Uh, the two-thirds bet was definitely one of my mistakes here, um, but yeah, we're just betting everything. Uh, so let's uh, let's see where that goes. Uh, the villain uh, is going to be folding out uh, a lot of their weak pairs here. It looks like majority of their weak pairs uh, uh, make up their range. Uh, they're going to have very few straights or sets, uh, given that they had called and not tried to four bet me. Uh, uh, they're going to have, uh, you know, some of these gut shots, uh, but again, not as many as I've got. And, uh, so yeah, they'll be folding out, uh, looks like, uh, nearly 6% of their hands here. Uh, they'll be raising with a few of them. Uh, looks like, uh, ace queen is going to be one of the ones it does raise with, but, uh, you know, only a small percentage of the time. Uh, but opponent had elected to call. And the turn was the four of spades. All right, for my seven six, um, looks like for the seven six of diamonds, uh, it's going to be um, Betty most of the time, so that's good. Uh, it's going to be. Uh, Using again the small bet size, uh, it does do like a really big bet size, uh, the the over bet every once in a while, uh, which felt intuitive for me, but it's not doing that very often. Uh, looks like the better one is really just, yeah, doing these small bet sizes out of position. Uh, it's reserving the big over bets for, you know, a lot of these. Uh, lo looks like a lot of the two pair hands are doing it. Um, All right, so let's uh, we'll use the, the small bet sizing. Opponent here is going to be, uh, looks like they're calling with a lot of stuff, but with uh, their two pair here with the ace queen, they're going to be, uh, should be raising me uh, pretty large. Uh, interested to see, do they do that with the... Uh, Large bet sizing too. Do they still want to raise as often? No, then they're just calling. Uh, with this bet size, uh, they're calling more often, uh, but still wanting to raise a lot. Um, well, let's stick with the small bet size, and they are going to be raising at least some of their ace queens here. Um, Actually, they're just going to be calling, I'm sorry, it's, it's a call here, uh, to see a nine of clubs. Uh, when we get here, they're seven, six. Uh, it's going to be checking most of the time, uh, or uh, it's going to be shoving the rest of the time, uh, it looks like. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, with my specific hand, uh, with the 7-6 of diamonds, it is always checking 100%. Uh, and it looks like it's doing a give up, which makes total sense to me because that blocks uh, them from having, you know, A7 and A6 of uh, diamonds. So that's removing a few of the flushes from their hand when I have it. If I am going to do a crazy bluff with the 7-6, I should be doing it without any diamonds. And a uh, slightly better chance that they were on those diamond draws uh, that may have missed. Uh, well, maybe King-7. Well, 
I don't even think that's in the range. <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, if I dig do a bet, uh, ace queens call it that. Every, oh, they're they're actually shoving all in every time. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of kind of neat. All right, let's uh, let's go through and play against the solution, um, and get to know the spot. We're going to be out of position. Uh, all right, this flush draw. We know it's a small bet size. Uh, we have a straight. Let's do a big bet. Oh no, still want small bet. That's right, a small bet for nearly everything. Uh, okay, now we can do the big bet here on the turn with a straight. Uh, small bet. Ace 10. All right, small bet. Oh, we're doing a give up here with our kings. Uh, small bet. Interesting. Okay, so I think the, uh, yeah, really the lesson here is that I should be betting really small on these, uh, on these boards. Yeah, out of position, uh, player here shouldn't, uh, Shouldn't be getting too aggressive. I should be. Looks like I should be betting frequently, uh, just with really small bet sizes, uh, which I guess is probably pretty standard. All right. Well, thank you for uh, for reviewing this hand with me, and I will see you next time. <laughs>